What is up guys, this is Shido back with another video on the Poco A5 and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest version of Evolution X that's the 11.2 and this is the 19th September 2025 build which I have been daily driving for a long time like I have been updating it whenever I get a newer update and the Evolution X updates are very consistent it gets time to time updates and if you are waiting for the Big Billion Day and the Amazon Great Indian Festival sale offers I will be posting all the deals and stuff in my YouTube channel's community kind of tab just check out my community tab or just click on subscribe button and hit the notification icon so that you can get the updates whenever I post them and I will be posting all the great deals that I find in during these sales so yeah do stay tuned for that and I don't actually recommend stuff that you do not need I genuinely recommend the stuff which you actually should buy or you may need which are in a great offer. I will be posting those in my YouTube community handle and even I'll be posting them on X maybe. So yeah, do follow me on X and my YouTube channel, of course. So yeah, let's continue with the video. Let's get straight up and let me show you what are the new things you can say in this 11.2 Evolution X update. Okay, so this is the build date 19th September 2025. And if you don't know how to flash this from, check out the flashing guide from the description box below. Obviously it is based on Android 16. In the about section right now if you look at the evolution x version it will show up as 11.2 so that's new and we have the security patch obviously as september 1st 2025 that's latest and if you keep tapping on this android 16's text it will give you the android 16's easter egg this is how cool it looks like stock kernel as the 5.10 gki and the build maintainer still show up so huge thanks to the developer of this rom we have the build date as 19 september 2025 again in the system settings, this is how it looks like. We still have the game bar. We still have the overlay stuff. We have the system updater and I have made several updating guides again so that you can follow them. And we have the USB configuration. You can set it to file transfer from here. And there is the gestures. Now here we have the quick tap action and the haptic feedback in intensity. If I just do it to medium. Yes, as you can see, it still works. No issues with it. We have the double press power button action. Then we have the three finger swipe. Now you can actually customize these things to a many more option. I would say there is three finger long press kind of option. So for that, let me show you how it works. You just have to hold like this and then you can select some particular area to take a screenshot. Like right now, the area which is highlighted will be only included in the screenshot. If I just leave it like this, as you can see, it opens the Google's markup kind of thing. So you can just mark some stuff from right here. So yeah, these are really cool features, I would say. Then we have the navigation mode in the gesture settings. We have the swipe to invoke assistant that obviously works. That's Gemini. And there is a long press to search and circle to search obviously is there. There is three button and circle to search specific toggle is there. Now, if I open apps like X and let's assume if I like do this circle to search kind of thing and there is the translate text option and once i do that the text has been translated all these things are working fine and even showing you the circle to search yes that obviously works fine everywhere you can just make a circle and it will select the stuff that you are looking at so this is nice and while doing everything it's just very fast and snappy experience there is one handed mode and you can use it like this and there is the double tap to check phone lift to check phone that obviously works fine there is buttons and there is a long press power button toggle torch and stuff control playback all these things but let me actually show you what's new on this 11.2 from 11.1 first things first in the display settings if you just go into it if you just scroll down there is night light option there is scheduling option and intensity changing option there is enhanced high hdr brightness mode if you enable that your display's brightness may go a little bit weird or the color profiles may go a little bit weird if you open a photo or anything so that's one thing Peak refresh rate I have selected to 90 hertz to test if it's actually working and if I just right now open test to your website yes it seems to be working properly to 90 fps that's nice but let me just switch to 120 hertz for now and we have the double tap to sleep wake up on plug high touch polling rate and stuff automatic high brightness mode is still there you can use it if you'd like to in the sound settings one thing I have been noticing is in the Dolby Atmos this is totally trimmed down for now. I don't know why, but yeah, choose profile option is there. There is dynamic movie, music, sound effects, and the voice and stuff. And we have the graphic equalizer as well, so that you can set a different kind of profile for the equalizer. But I have been using it for flat, obviously. There is space enhancer as well. But yeah, there is this toggle so that you can actually disable the Dolby Atmos if you don't like that. But in the sound and vibration, let me show you. There is the pixel kind of sounds or ringtones. You can actually say, 
yeah this the next adventure and stuff is there and a lot more other things which are there so yeah these are the pixel sounds you can say and a lot more other options are there yes obviously in the vibration and head pics it has these like expressive kind of UI design but one more thing is that the wallpaper that you are looking at just check out this wallpaper it looks beautiful even in the lock screen let me show you here yeah it looks super cool in my opinion at least but these are pixel 10 kind of wallpapers if you just go into the wallpapers and styles here you will get these kind of wallpapers here including with the AI wallpaper and the emoji workshop right now you will get these contours aura forms and stuff all these things I have been using this aura form wallpaper but yeah there are much more options like even the contour options just look at this how beautiful it looks so yeah pixel 10 wallpapers definitely looks cool if you love these kind of colors you can totally use them and obviously there are the live wallpapers like the come alive and the living universe all these things the pixel old kind of pixel wallpapers all these things are still there even the google arts and cultures kind of and in the wallpapers and styles you can actually change the lock screen clocks of android 16 from right here and I'm noticing one more new animation that I can show you here. If you just open app, let me show you if it supports this going back of Android 16 kind of animation. You just go back earlier. It used to just do this, but right now it just goes wherever you go back. Like if you go to the bottom, it will do. It will just do that animation to the bottom. If you just scroll like this. Then if you just move it to the top, it will just like go to that direction. It's just minor things. But yeah, small kind of things definitely makes a difference into like real life animations. Just look at this, how beautiful it looks while going back. So yeah, these are minor things, but yeah, definitely seems different. And for now, the, from the always on display earlier, I think the display was actually running at higher refresh. That's why it was consuming more battery. But right now, the always on display has been switched to 60 Hertz so that it doesn't consume that much battery, I guess. Animation seems to be fine of double tap to wake and double tap to sleep. The fingerprint scanner, it's still working great, no need to worry. But yeah, double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen, it's not there. But yeah, double tap to sleep on the status bar obviously is there. And these kind of animations of the widgets are working great, even the battery widget and everything. In the quick setting panel, definitely it looks still beautiful. And you can edit and add even more toggles and change the size of these. And it does these kind of animation once you just move it around or do stuff like that. Multiple different toggle options are there to add. You won't feel the lack of toggles at all. And these animations still looks amazingly well managed. And just look at this, how beautiful it looks. If you switch from a older Android version, you can definitely notice that. And one more new thing is the flashlight's brightness. Like right now, you can just turn on the flashlight or if you just tap here, you can adjust the flashlight's brightness. And even if you just tap and hold, as you can see right now, it shows off. And you can increase the brightness drastically you just notice how bright that flashlight is and yeah if you just toggle it on or off from right here it looks beautiful but yeah the animation of this just looks superb just look at this yeah these things definitely makes a huge difference i would say while daily driving around it doesn't even feel like that it's a custom rom or something it just feels like it, you are using a pixel device or something like that Okay, so in the evolver settings if you go and it will look like this this about section was on the bottom but right now it's on top i guess and we have the quick setting panel customization here and right now there is this haptic feedback option for the quick toggles yes it does give you the haptic feedback once you toggle on or off there was a always on display wallpaper that has been removed because i think it was causing some issues and in the miscellaneous settings there is the smart pixels right now you can enable that and you can auto enable it in the battery saver mode there is the burn in protection as well you can change the time for that but yeah smart pixel is just it just dims some amount of pixel to save even more battery i don't actually use the smart pixels at all but yeah you can definitely use it if you'd like to and one more thing is that that accord music player which was there earlier has been removed for now by the way let me tell you one thing that the plain jiggity for me it's still passing on the latest build i didn't have to do anything but if in case it doesn't work for you just go to the settings make sure you select a proper key box and after you do that go to the miscellaneous settings go to the component spoofing and from here just click on this update plain degree fix and after you do that it should work properly fine 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, what is this component spoofing and stuff, what is this speech JSON, what is this plain degree stuff, let me tell you that the plain degree fix is what you use for using banking apps. And I have been using a lot of banking apps like MobiQuick, SBI card, Yuno SBI, and I have been using this iMobile of ICICI and the other apps that you can notice from here. So yeah, all the banking apps that I have been using, it's working fine. Even Amazon Pay and stuff, it's totally working fine. I didn't have any problems while using banking apps except Google Pay because Google Pay, I have tried to set it up, but it's simply not working because I, maybe I'm not rooted or anything. I don't have any kind of modules or stuff like that. But, but yeah, except Google Pay, all other banking apps should be working properly fine. I even stopped using Google Pay a long time ago. So yeah, I, it's not a problem for me. Talking about battery life, well, let me actually show you here in the battery settings. Yes, the, in the battery information, if you just go into it, you will see a lot of battery charging cycle I have gone through. This is the original battery that I'm still using for about two years now. And it has gone through about thousand plus charging cycles, which is insane. And this amount of charging cycle, I would say I have never got in any other device. I had to replace the battery, I think about 800, 900 cycles on the K20 Pro, but still on the Poco F5, I don't feel the need to actually replace or change the battery for now. It doesn't give me very bad battery life at all, but yeah, it has degraded quite a lot, I would say, but even with the degraded battery, let me actually show you the Aqua battery results. And with this, I can show you the estimated screen on time here that I have been getting. It's about seven hours, 15 minutes plus like seven hours of screen on time for a device like this, which performs really well, the animations and everything. Just notice how fluidly it works and everything just opens snappily. And every app that I open, just notice how smoothly it opens and stuff. So yeah, I do not have any complaints regarding the battery life here. And we have the screen off time. That's the standby. You can say about 40 hours and the combine shows more than 13 hours. In the health section, these is again estimated numbers. In terms of degradation, you can say 1000 image is just gone. So my battery's health is at 81% for now. It shows over here. But even with that, I don't feel the need to change it because seven hours of screen on time with a device like this, which is very, very fast and it performs really, really well. Like how well you might be asking. Well, let me show you some benchmarks so that you can get an idea about the overall UI performance of this ROM. And obviously the fast charging and stuff, everything is working fine here. No need to worry. If you disable the always on display, let me show you the pickup gesture. If you just put the device somewhere like this and pick it up just like this, as you can see, it works flawlessly. This Evolution X ROM, I have daily drived it for months and I have never actually faced a huge issue or anything. Everything is just so stable and everything is just super smooth on my Poco A5. It has been and huge thanks to the developer because of him, we got consistent updates and we got amazing fixes. I hope we have this kind of ROM for all the latest devices that will be released for future and you can obviously donate to the developer if you want to have ROMs like these for future devices and stuff. But for now, let me clarify that this Evolution X version 11.2, it's just a very good ROM. I am just enjoying it. But yeah, I will be actually switching to or I'm willing to actually switch to a different ROM. Not because of I faced any issue or anything over here. I just want a taste of a different ROM. So yeah, I'm thinking about flashing the Infinity X ROM later in the Poco A5. Let's see if I can do that and if I will be able to really drive it. The stock camera here, it's still the Poco camera and everything is working fine. 1x, 2x, all these things. And even the front camera photos and stuff should be working fine. And the portrait mode, as you can see, there is the portrait mode blur. I'll give you some samples here so that I can get an idea. And there is a panorama of vlog, short film, slow motion and all this stuff. So you can use all of these. And in the video settings, let me show you, there is 20p, 60fps video shooting option up to for the front camera. And if you just switch to the rear camera, Yes, there is 4K option, but if you do that, your video will be limited to only 30 FPS, not 60. So yeah, if you want to shoot 60 FPS videos, you need to stick to 1080p. And there's pro mode option as well for taking photos or videos, you can use it. And yeah, the other options you can notice. But the stock camera here, it's decent and you can take really, really quickly a photo or something like that. It's not a problem at all. So yeah, I would say it definitely captures a lot of details and everything you can notice from here. So overall, I would say it's a very good camera. And you can also use G cams and this is the G cam that I have been using. It's still working fine. I'll just link a video if you want this G cam in the description. 
So yeah, that was it about the latest Evolution XROM on the Poco A5 and I feel it's just a very smooth experience overall. I daily drive it. This ROM just works guys, it's, it doesn't let me down any time and every time it's just a very snappy experience all over the UI. I haven't faced any kind of issues while daily driving it. Even I use MobiQuick and Amazon Pay and stuff for UPA apps. All those things are working fine. The cameras are working great, no issues whatsoever with it. So yeah, I would say this is definitely one of the most reliable ROMs that I have daily drived on the Poco A5 for now at least in September 2025. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Please share this video with your friends. As usual, if you want them to know about the latest custom ROMs and how is the overall condition of them in a like device like Poco A5, how they are holding up. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Jiro from KDNDX signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.